हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द एपीजी पाठशाला आई एम विद्या कोठेकर एंड माय ओनली इंट्रोडक्शन इज आई हैव बीन टीचर ऑफ बायो फिजिक्स फॉर मोर देन फोर्टी इयर्स आई हैव बीन प्रोफेसर एट ऑल इंडिया इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल साइंसेस प्रोफेसर हेड ऑफ बायो टेक्नोलॉजी बायो इन्फॉर्मेटिक्स इन जे इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी डायरेक्टर ऑफ डी वाई पाटिल बायोटेक्नोलॉजी बायो इन्फॉर्मेटिक्स इंस्टीट्यूट एंड इन ऑल दिस इयर्स माय पैशन वाज टू नीड टू टीच बायो फिजिक्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन ए मॉड्यूल एब्सॉर्बशन स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी ऑफ न्यूक्लिक एसिड्स डीएनए एंड आरएनए न्यूक्लिक एसिड बेसिस एस्टिमेशन ऑफ कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ डीएनए डीएनए प्यूरिटी होमोजीनिटी this belongs to the paper techniques used in molecular biophysics part 2 after completing this module you should be able to understand and introduce yourself to uvv's absorption by dna and rna you should be able to discuss absorption spectroscopy of nucleic acid bases nucleic acid backbone elaborate on estimation on concentration of dna and rna you should be able to discuss application of uv spectroscopy for determination of purity of nucleic acids and i want to you to be introduced to the study of homogeneity in dna and its application absorption spectroscopy of nucleic acids dna and rna is a very very useful tool in molecular biology because anything in molecular biology is so much dependent on dna and rna and their concentration the most important thing is the simplicity of the experimental setup needed for measurement of absorption and possibility reliable estimation of concentration and purity of dna and rna which is a prerequisite for many studies and that can be done just using uvv spectroscopy the quantitative estimation of dna and rna is based on the fact that the absorption of dna rna and their constituents follow a particular pattern quantification can be done on the basis of beer lambert law nucleic acids dna and rna are made up of nitrogenous bases as adenine guanine cytosine thymine uracil phosphate group and sugars deoxyribose and ribose the sugar phosphate makes the backbone and the bases nitrogenous bases belong to two classes purines which are abbreviated as r are adenine and guanine which are 5 6 fused aromatic rings and pyrimidines which are six member rings they have alternate double bonds and these are also abbreviated as ade or a gua or g cyt or c thy or t and u r a or u the ribose shown in the left hand side found in rna is a normal sugar with one oxygen atom attached to each carbon atom it is a monosaccharide with the formula h c double bond o c h o h 4 h whereas deoxyribose found in dna lacks one oxygen atom it doesn't have oxygen at the position 2 it is also a monosaccharide with the formula h c double bond o ch2 choh3 we show in this figure also the nomenclature for the carbon atom used in all dna models like it is c1 dash first carbon c2 dash second carbon c3 dash third carbon C4 dash fourth carbon and the CH2 group which is attached at the 
C, a fourth position is labeled as C5 dash. So DNA has sugar phosphate backbone. The sugar phosphate backbone runs in the opposite direction with respect to the orientation of 5 dash and 3 dash hydroxy groups. We show in the figure sugar phosphate backbone. We also show how they wrap around each other in helical sense, which to give the Watson Greek structure. Because the sugar phosphate backbones have an overall helical structure and they roll around each other. What is a glycosyl bond? The DNA polymer is built by attaching those DNA bases adenine, guanine, thymine, cytosine, or in case of RNA, RNA it is uracil. These are attached to the sugar phosphate backbone through a glycosyl bond. How the bond is formed? Like we have base with say N1C2, that is the terminology we use, and there is a NH group at the ninth position, NH, and we have sugar, C1 dash, C2 dash, C3 dash, C4 dash, C5 dash, O4 dash, and that C1 dash hydroxy group and H atom of the N9H group, they combine and the water molecule leaves and the glycosyl bond is formed. The bases have alternate double bonds, so they are aromatic in nature, but this leads to planarity of their structure. So, this can stack or one or each other and they are held together by a conjugated pi electron system, somewhere it is also called uh, pi electron current. Structure of RNA also can be helical or it can be more complex also with some helical regions in between. Whereas bases stack over each other in those helical region and not in the region which is not helical. We show here a typical absorption spectrum of DNA. Nucleic acids, as you know, they have very strong absorption in the region 240 to 70 nanometer. The conventional UV absorption spectrum is seen in the figure. This spectrum arises from the transition in the aromatic bases, adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine and uracil. And depending on the base composition and the environment, these peaks can shift from 255 to 265 nanometers. The bases can be protonated. As a result, the absorption spectrum of DNA are sensitive to the pH of the medium. At the neutral pH, the absorption peak lambda max for guanosine shifts to 253 nanometer and for cytidine to 271 nanometer. This is the reason why polymeric DNA and RNA show a strong absorption band at 260 nanometer. In the native DNA, bases are stacked in a hydrophobic core. Their absorbance is considerably decreased, whereas in denatured DNA, shown in the red color in the figure on the left hand side, the absorbance is increased. When we heat DNA molecule, the two strands separate out and DNA is denatured and then it shows 30% higher absorbance compared to native DNA. This is shown in the right hand side of this picture. 
and this effect is called hyperchromicity. One can plot absorbance at 260 nanometer with respect to temperature when we are heating DNA. Then we get a curve which is almost a sigmoidal shape and the temperature at which there is a 50% increase in the absorbance is called DNA melting temperature or TM. We show in this slide UV vis absorption by bases. The spectra by adenine, guanine, thymine, cytosine is shown in the left hand side, whereas their molar extension coefficient, lambda max, and absorption at 260 nanometers is shown on the right hand side in the table. The absorption by the bases is in between 259 to 274 nanometers. How to follow sugar phosphate backbone spectrum? Because the backbone PO2 stretching band can be followed only by FTIR spectroscopy. It cannot be followed by UVV spectroscopy because these bands are present from 836 to 860 centimeter inverse respectively. A comparison of the aggregated absorption of these bands, A836 divided by absorption at 836 plus 860, which can be followed up, and it can give us quantitative estimation of PA transformation because these are dependent on the backbone conformation of the DNA which can be a B form or an A form or a Z form. What do we need for estimation of the concentration of DNA and RNA? The most common technique for determination of the concentration of DNA is UV absorbance at 260 nanometers. For that, we need a spectrophotometer shown in the left hand side. We should have a light source, halogen lamps, tungsten lamps and various other lamps. We should have UV transparent cuvettes because all kinds of cuvettes may not be very good for DNA spectroscopy. This method is very simple, non-destructive, it gives fairly accurate results. There are some problems with the absorption spectroscopy of DNA. One problem is the sensitivity of this method is not very high. As a result, one needs at least 1 milligram per milliliter sample for proper quantification of DNA and RNA, which is expensive because DNA is very expensive molecule and to buy so much material is quite expensive. There is second problem that the spectrum for DNA and RNA is more or less similar, so one cannot easily distinguish between DNA and RNA. Also, the method cannot be used with crude preparations of DNA because it is very, very sensitive to the impurities. Performing absorption measurement on DNA, what we do actually, we measure the absorbance, basically we want to measure only at 260 nanometer. But one should use such dilution that you get the measurements where the absorption is, goes linearly, generally between 0.1 to 1 OD. The concentration is estimated by measuring absorption at, at 260 and then adjusted adjusting that measurement for turbidity and many errors. Now, for example, after all those adjustments, if OD is equal to 1, then it corresponds to about 50 microgram per milliliter of double-stranded DNA, 40 microgram per milliliter of single-stranded RNA, and about 33 microgram per milliliter of single-stranded DNA or oligonucleotides. 
for correcting for the turbidity in the sample, one can take the measurement of absorbance at 320 nanometer and multiplying by dilution factor and using OD equal to 1.0 for 50 microgram per milliliter at 260 nanometer for double stranded DNA. We can calculate the concentration micrograms per milliliter equal to absorbance at 260 reading minus absorbance at 320 reading multiplied by dilution factor multiplied by 50 micrograms per milliliter. And the total yield is obtained by multiplying DNA concentration by final total purified volume in the sample. Concentration calculation. So what we do, we first measure the optical density, which is log upon of I0 upon I. In a 10 millimeter cubit, if OD is equal to 2, for double stranded DNA, the concentration will be 100 microgram per milliliter. But if the cubit size is reduced to 3 millimeter, the OD for 100 microgram per milliliter sample would be reduced rather. It will be equal to 2 divided by 10 upon 3 equal to 0.6. For any OD with smaller cubit, you have to just multiply by observed concentration by 10 divided by path length because 10 millimeter is the normal cubit size. So thus we get 0.6 multiplied by 10 divided by 3 multiplied by 50 which is normal which gets you 100 microgram per milliliter. So either way we can do. We have to do correction for DNA base composition. Since the absorbance by different DNA bases is different, base composition and sequence context influence the absorbance. Thus, for example, 1.0 OD at 260 nanometer for DCCCCCCCC has mass of 39 micrograms, whereas 1.0 OD at 260 for another sequence of the A A A A A A A A A has a mass of 25 microgram. The molecular extinction coefficient epsilon at 260 can be calculated for any sequence. Number of people have worked on it. Using there are two approaches. Either one can use nearest neighbor method, although we can get more accuracy when we use exact value of epsilon 260 at for each oligon protein. The formula is epsilon at 260 equal to summation of nearest neighbor for all combinations minus summation for individuals plus summation for modification. It is possible to take into account the presence of modified groups such as fluorescent dyes which has significant absorbance at 260 nanometers. We give here a typical example of calculation of epsilon, the molecular extinction coefficient, for a nucleotide sequence 5-D ATCG duplex. The calculation goes like that. That is epsilon ATCG equal to 1 4 2 epsilon APT plus 2 epsilon TPC, all pairs we take into consideration, 2 epsilon CPG. Now, we have to subtract whatever is taken twice. So, we subtract minus epsilon TP minus epsilon CP. If you go on putting the actual values of absorbance for APT, TPC and so on, we can calculate the extension coefficient for the sequence given above. If we make a search on the net, we find several oligo extension calculators and we can calculate extension coefficient for any sequence, DNA or RNA, single stranded or double stranded and so on. I have given the site here and also a snapshot of their site. You have to just follow the instructions given on their site and put your data so as to calculate the molecular extension coefficient for your sequence. There are, for convenience, there are many, many, if you search on the net, 
there are many oligo extinction calculators and you can use any one of them you can enter your sequence or enter the number of nucleotides in addition to the absorbance path length sample volume of stock measured total volume in the cuvet total volume of your stock and one can get the exact concentration or exact amount of dna you have only thing you have to remember that if you enter the number of each nucleotides then we should not have to use sequence because then it will be duplication of the data so we have to use a clear button which will enable this also we have to make sure to choose whether you have oligo dna or oligo rna how to estimate purity of dna and rna is quite complicated because dna is not the only molecule that will absorb at 260 nanometer rna has greater absorbance at 260 nanometer there are many aromatic amino acids these absorb at 280 nanometers and they will leave some absorbance at 260 there is a presence of guanidine would also lead to absorbance or higher absorbance at 260 nanometer what does it mean it means if we use 260 nanometer absorption for dna estimation it would lead to overestimation of dna concentration it will be erroneous so one should measure absorbance that is generally the practice from 230 to 320 nanometer to discriminate all the contaminant the most common purity calculation use ratio of absorbance at 260 nanometer and at 280 nanometer like a260 upon a280 a good quality of dna should have this ratio equal to or in between 1.7 to 2 a measure of 1.6 uh, it doesn't render dna to be unsuitable for any experiment but it might be a good idea to reprecipitate it and redo it rather however lower ratios than this go on indicating more contaminants in this table given below the ratio of od at 260 nanometers divided by od at 280 nanometers and the percentage of nucleic acid and one can use also a formula given by glasser which gives you percentage of nucleic acid based on the above data where one can just calculate what is really the nucleic acid uh, value in that rather so that just takes care of the protein impurities present in your sample there are many sources of contamination a low value of the ratio of absorbance at 260 to absorbance at 280 means there may be a residual phenol or other reagents which are used in the extraction protocol or a very low concentration of nucleic acid less than 10 uh, milli, uh, microgram per milliliter the high value means there may be a residual rna from extraction the phenol absorbance peak at 270 nanometer which gives ratio absorbance at 260 to absorbance of 280 equal to 1.2 if the phenol is used for extraction it is the greatest source of contaminant absorbance ratio at 260 and 230 nanometers is also used for checking the purity of dna we show here in the table values for RNA. A strong absorbance at 230 nanometer indicates presence of organic compounds or chaotropic salts in the purified DNA. Absorbance 260 by 230 ratio, however, lacks the sensitivity for protein contamination in nucleic acids. Table shows the values for RNA. 100% DNA gives the ratio of approximately about 1.8. 
the ratio absorbance 260 upon 8 to 30 with lower values than 1.5 indicate presence of thiocyanate there are still some more sources of contamination for that you measure the absorbance at 230 nanometers and check the ratio of absorbance at 260 to absorbance at 230 and if you get different value it means you have got carbohydrate carry over residual phenol from nucleic acid extraction residual guanidine often used in column based kits glycogen used for precipitation high reading means a blank measurements on dirty pedestal using inappropriate solution for blank measurement latter should have same ph and ionic strength as the sample solution for example water for the blank measurement for sample dissolved in tea may give a low value other contaminants are phenolate thiocyanate and organic compound thus for pure rna absorbance at 230 to absorbance at 260 to absorbance at 280 should have ratios as 1 is to 2 is to 1 while for pure dna this ratio should be 1 is to 1.8 to 1 absorbance at 330 nanometer or higher indicates particulate contaminating in the solution and which is causing scattering effect and that's why you are getting this absorbance negative values also you get some time but if the incorrect solution was used as a blank this value could arise due to fluorescence of the dye in the solution let us see dna homogeneity or inhomogeneity the dna molecule when heated the two strands separate out the melting temperature is very much sensitive to the composition of dna like presence of metal ions change in salt concentration presence of other molecules they will all affect the melting temperature team like for example presence of salt has a stabilizing effect on dna it is possible to monitor all these changes following dlm melting curve and studying in homogeneity in the dna sample in this slide on the left hand side we see a dna melting curve which is a simple pure monophasic dna melting which we have also seen in the earlier part of this lecture but if there are more complex things going on in your dna sample you see a curve much different that is shown on the right hand side of the slide what does that different curve means it means there is something more going on in your dna so people can plot a derivatives like da by dt and just see what things are going on so then you see two peaks so that means there was not a single phenomena but there were biphasic melting which is seen in the case of dna triple helix and many other places so this way we can use dna melting curve for testing purity and homogeneity in the dna sample in the curve here we see two kinds of melting at 57 degrees and 70 degrees so students let's now summarize what we have learned in this module first we have just seen the uv vis absorption by dna and rna we have seen in details the absorption spectrum of nucleic acid bases and also backbone although it is not in uv bis region we have also given you the calculation of molar extinction coefficient epsilon of any single stranded or double stranded dna and rna and given also some references where you can get calculator online because that is very important to know the correct value of epsilon we have seen determination of concentration of dna and rna using these epsilon values 
a method for correcting the concentration of DNA RNA based on the measurement of absorbance at wavelength lambda equal to 230, 260, 280, and 320 nanometers was also seen. Lastly, we have given you application of the DNA melting curve for the study of DNA homogeneity, effect of ions and other molecules on the DNA molecule was seen by studying the DNA melting curve. Thank you very much.